Thank you for the presenters of the field crop session. It is definitely a challenging task to grow cereal under low and fluctuation annual rainfall, and you have shown us good examples of innovative way to do so. The next session will be on fruit crops, or tree crops. It will focus on date palm, a crop with enormous economic importance for the country participating in this conference, an olive which has been grown in our region for thousands of years and is an important component of our population diet. The first lecture will be given by Professor Abdulheb Zaid, Secretary General of Khalifa International Award for Date Palm and Agricultural Innovation, Abu Dhabi, UAE. He will speak about date marketing, current and prospective situation. The second lecture, also on date palm, will be given by Dr. Yuval Cohen from Vulcani Institute, Israel. He will give us an overview on the progress and challenges of the Israeli date palm industry. I will present the third lecture, and it will be on olive cultivation in arid area, the Israeli experience. And the last presentation in the session will be given by Professor Bekir Arul from University of Haran, Turkey, this topic will be fruit production under semi-arid and irrigated condition at Southeast Anatolian region of Turkey. Please. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Abdel Wahab Zaid. I am uh, Goodwill Ambassador of the FAO uh, United Nation in UAE, also advisor at the Ministry of Presidential Office, and the Secretary General of the Khalifa International Award for Day Palm and Agricultural Innovation. My uh, contribution today to this important event will be dealing with the uh, uh, an important subject in the date palm industry, which is the date marketing current and prospective situation. Uh, I would like to mention here that all the data presented in this presentation will, uh, is, is uh, from uh, FAO, while the uh, International Trade Center is the source of all data related to date export for both quantities and values. Uh, this uh, slide uh, show the, uh, the date production. Uh, as you can see the, on the left side, the progress of the date production in metric ton from almost 10 years, 2008, 2017. And uh, you can see that the, uh, in red is the work production, while in, in blue, dark uh, blue is the production in the Arab countries. Uh, first remark, you can see that uh, uh, both uh, trends are almost the same and there was a slight difference of almost 2,000, uh, 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 2 million tons uh, uh, in difference between uh, most of the areas and, and the years from 2008, as I said, to 2017. The second uh, important remark uh, or uh, outcome is that the average share of the Arab region, which is about between uh, 5 million and 6 million tons, uh, from the world day production uh, is around 75%. So in other words, 75% of the day production is uh, located in, in, uh, in the Arab countries. The main, the main date producing countries, uh, these data are about 2017. You can see that uh, Egypt about 1.5 million tons, followed by Algeria, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and, and UAE. These uh, big five countries are uh, producing uh, more than 80% of uh, these area production here on the left side. Next. So in uh, the uh, the date export versus production in percentage, as you can see, 
in uh, this is uh, percentages and you can see here it's uh, for the uh, one and two is about five percent eight percent always 16 percent so the, during the last two decades the share of export from the global day production increased steadily from as i mentioned from 5.31 in 2001 to uh, 2001, 2002, to 16.34 during the period 2014, 2017. Uh, and if we look uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2018, which is uh, after this period, uh, the difference between the global date production and total dates quantity that were handled on the international market was about uh, 6.8 million. It represents the local consumption and the waste, which reached more than 40% of the total production in some countries. The date export on the left side, we have the share of the date quantity export in tons, and on the right side, we have the share of the total value of the date export uh, in percentage, of course. So on the left side, date quantity export share of countries, you can see Iran with 21%, Iraq with 18%, UAE with almost 14%, uh, and then uh, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and Tunisia. Uh, so uh, this is the quantity export. You know, you can see Israel here, is about less than 3%. Uh, if you go to the value of data export, we can see that, you know, uh, for, for uh, where is it, Israel, which was uh, the percentage of production was less than 3%, value-wise, it's get above 8%. Uh, Iran is having 17%, uh, Tunisia 16%. Tunisia also uh, was not producing much. It's, a, it's about, about 9%, but when it comes to value, it is uh, above 16% uh, of the total value of the debt export. Uh, UAE here again, you can see how important this country uh, value wise and also production wise. So because uh, the, the, the countries that are making more money, you know, uh, like uh, Tunisia and, uh, and uh, uh, Tunisia and Israel, uh, you can see that the quantity wise, they are not producing as much as the big guys, but uh, quality wise is the, mostly the fancy dates and uh, which, uh, and also they are targeting the niche market at the international level. Here we compare between the average share of the quantity and uh, uh, comparison between the average share of the quantity and value of imported dates by the mean date producing region during the period, again, 10 years here, 2008, 2017. In green, you can see the quantities, but in red is the value in percentage. So the region we, we target in this study was the European Union, the Middle East and Africa, South Asia, the Maghreb region, and North America. So if you look at, uh, for example, in the EU market, the 15 uh, European countries, uh, you can see, uh, I can relatively speaking, compared to South Asia, quantity wise, they are uh, uh, receiving less than one third of what is being exported to South Asia, but you can see that uh, value wise is twice, you know, and you can see the, uh, the case of Middle East and, and Africa, North Africa, Africa in general, you can see the quantity is a lot uh, higher than the value that is received from that export. So again, you, you will understand those big differences. 
uh, as you can see here, the threshold value, and there is another one, you know, in regard to the quantities. Uh, this uh, slide shows the progress of the quantity of dates imported by the mean uh, EU 15 countries during the period of 10 years. And uh, color wise, you have uh, France, you have UK, you have Germany, then you have also Netherlands, you have Italy and Spain. So the most important uh, importer in Europe among the 15, we can say easily is France, uh, Germany, Germany here, and the UK. These three countries are taking about 70% of the import of dates to uh, European Union. The quantity of dates that are imported, as I said, look here, France is importing 29% of the total imported in 2017, followed by UK 17%, Germany 16% and 8% for Netherlands. So you are talking about uh, about 70%, close to 75% if we add Italy, of the ex import is done by France, UK, Germany, Netherlands and Italy. These uh, one present the price in US dollar for one metric ton in 2017. <clears throat> the highest one is uh, in the European Union, 15 countries, is about 2,749 US dollar for uh, one ton, which means the one kilo is about 2.75 US uh, dollar. Compared to Asia, is uh, less than uh, 50 cents per kilo. I mean, it's 500, about 500 per ton, which is less than 50 cents uh, of a dollar for one kilo. So in combining the data of this chart and the previous slide we shared with you, we can say the following. The first region importing dates in terms of importing quantity is South Asia. Quantity wise, it's importing about almost 35% of all export to this region. The, the first region importing dates in terms of value is Europe with uh, almost 26% here. Then the average price for the US is 2,750 US dollar per metric ton relatively speaking is a 2.75 US dollar per kilo. Such, such high value is reached in, in European Union. However, uh, the lowest value of exported date or imported dates are Asian country with about uh, 50 cents per kilo. The, the main uh, country provider in, the, you know, the days to European Union are uh, Tunisia, Israel, and Algeria. And the, these data are of three uh, period, 2013, 2015, and 2017. So there is no, uh, for all three countries, there is a slight increase, you know, relatively about less than 10% every year, except for Israel during uh, 2015, 2017 period. The same thing for Algeria. So we can say during the last six years, Tunisia, Israel, and Algeria were the main dates provided to the European Union 15 countries, followed by Iran, but uh, it's not as significant as the three countries. Duklet Nur constitutes 90% of the Tunisian and Algerian dates exported to European Union. However, for Israel, Medjool is the main date variety exported by Israel to European Union, in addition to two second varieties, Berhi and Deglat Nur. 15 suppliers to uh, European Union value wise, you can see that in addition to the main uh, three date provider to the European Union, which I 
France in the fourth position with, uh, you know, almost $20 million. However, Israel is exporting, you know, about or gaining from its export to Europe is $75 million, while Tunisia is the highest one with more than $100 million from its export to the European Union. The main date varieties handled, uh, handled uh, on the international market. You can see the Medjool, the Biblet Noor, and the Berhi. Then there are a variety that are slowly entering and progressively entering the market, which is Somani, you know, uh, from Egypt. And then you have Sukkari and Khodri from uh, GS, uh, GCC countries, mainly Saudi Arabia. Uh, international marketing of the Arab region, you can see that uh, UAE is taking uh, more than 45 or 46 percent. And uh, you have here uh, the share of the Arab country from the region from international debt marketing, UAE with 20 percent, same value with KSA, a little bit more with Tunisia. And, and Iraq. The low performance and the absence of competitiveness of the date produced by most of the Arab countries is mainly caused or due to uh, the following uh, six points. Most of the planted date varieties are of low quality and not suitable for the regional and international market. That's the main reason. There is a predominance of traditional harvesting and post-harvesting practices and processes. There is a large absence of date marketing standards for most of the date varieties produced in the Arab region. There is also most of the produced date do not conform to the marketing standards of the lucrative high income market, Western Europe mainly, and consequently they are mainly oriented to the less profitable market of Southwest Asia. There is a low knowledge of the international market requirement, and there is an important decline in date consumption in the Arab country. The extension program, uh, we, we, we can uh, briefly say that there was a huge interest in planting of the major variety. Morocco is dealing about 3 million new, 3 million new trees planted, of which 70% are major. Egypt uh, also started a, a large, a huge uh, 5 million uh, date farm program with also uh, an important share for medjool variety. Jordan plant to plants uh, about half million of medjool variety. Oman started a program of 1 million date farm composed of local varieties. Saudi Arabia also the private sector is moving toward the medjool production. So as a conclusion, we can say that uh, there is a steadily increase of the date production and lower rise in the market demand of date as shown by the ratio export production for the last 10 years, which is around 16%. Only 16% of what is produced in the Arab region is exported, which is very, very low. There is an important extension of date plantation in the Near East North Africa region with a large part of Majul. And we can see about uh, several million new medjool trees entering production within the next four or five years. Use of appropriate technology to improve the quality of the date produced by most of the date producing country. However, there is a low date consumption rate at the global level, which is less than one kilo per person. So what we can conclude from here, there is an increasing competition on the international market more pressure on the uh, on the end, traditional measure provider for the international market and possible negative impact on the prices at the international level. We have to get ready for this. Uh, as a consequence, there is an, um, it is very important to start implementing coordination mechanisms to ensure a better use of available competency and better management of the market provision. And we are recommending the case of uh, Israel diet production and, 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 and marketing to be well studied and uh, see what kind of benefit uh, to take out of that uh, model. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day. Bye bye.
Hello, my name is Yuval. I'm from the Vulcani Center in Israel, and I will be speaking about progress and challenges of the Israeli date palm industry. Date is an important uh, crop in the culture of the three monotheistic uh, religions in North Africa and in the Middle East. In both, for both religions and for the inhabitants along the years, the tree symbolize the tree of life as, and its importance for uh, living in this uh, region is tremendous. Date is cultivated throughout the North Africa from Mauritania and Morocco in the north and all the way till Egypt in the east. It cultivates the entire Arabian Peninsula, Iraq, Iran, Pakistan, and even protruding into uh, India. Israel protrudes north of this growing region, and most of this of its uh, country is not suitable for commercial date cultivation. There's a gradient from north to south and from west to east in climatic condition of the country. And only in the eastern region, in the uh, great uh, Baqa, the uh, valley of uh, the Jordan Valley and the uh, Arva Valley, the cultivation is possible. In this region, it is usually the main or in many times the only food crop cultivated. The date industry as of, of uh, January this year is comprised of a set of nine cultivars. Most of them are from Iraq, Iraqi origin, some are from Egypt, and some originated in North Africa. The industry uh, was for years a rather small industry with uh, 100 to 200,000 trees. But since the, uh, the beginning of the new millennia, dramatic uh, development of this industry occurred and the industry expanded by approximately five times in, this, in, in, in the last 20 years. This, is, this, occurred, this process occurred mainly, if not only, by one cultivar, Majul, which was adopted and planted uh, aggressively. Uh, today, approximately 83% of the dates planted in, the, in date orchards are of the Majul uh, cultivar, and Israel is turning more and more into a one cultivar uh, date industry. The Majul is a large uh, date of origin, of Moroccan origin, and uh, we learned, we developed protocols for its harvest as semi-dry, succulent, soft, and perfect food, uh, and this resulted in very high uh, demands both in Israel and abroad, and it turned into a very important export product from Israel. The export of it in the last uh, 10 years expanded by more than three, the, 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 the production was expanded by more than three times, and the export was uh, expanded by two and a half times in the last 10 years. And currently Israel dominates approximately 50%, if not more, of this a major uh, industry in the world. Uh, the, the industry is expected to further expand, and this is because the trees that are planted, that are only getting into production, or only those, and even those that did not start production, are only are going to increase the yields, and we expect 30 to 40 percent increase in yield in the next five years. So we have summarized the date industry uh, includes approximately 850,000 uh, uh, trees cultivars on almost 7,000 hectares. And more than 80% of these are of the cultivar Majur. Annual yield of this industry worth approximately $250 million. And, most, and, and a large portion of it is aimed to Western Europe for export. Uh, the, uh, value of date exported to Western Europe is expected by 85 million euros. The industry is, exp is, exp is expected to expand further by at least 30%, if not 40% in the last five years, in the next five years. This success uh, of uh, the date industry is part of a close cooperation that exists between a research, extension, and growers, and moreover, the rapid 
implementation of new technologies. This cycle and this colossal reactions are those that enable and promote the success of the industry. And for this, the Israeli public uh, sector uh, of agricultural research is uh, investing a lot. First, in the Vulcani Center, which is Israel Agricultural Research uh, Center, the, extent, the extension of the Ministry of uh, Agriculture called Shaham and the Plant Protection Services all work together to enable and to ensure that the, pro that the industry move forward. On top of this, we have regional R&D stations and we have a, a lot of effort from the Day Growers Board to promote the region. Additional academic research centers and recently more and more contribution from the private sectors are there to promote further the industry. Just for an example, the, uh, the Vulcani Center uh, has six institutes and in five of them, we have experts working on date pumps. So with this, we can form teams to tackle and to solve any problem and to promote any issue that we want from engineering to physiology, to diseases, to post-harvest. So some of the challenges that we're facing in Israel, first the tree height, the crown is always on the top of the trees that reach 20 meters, it's hard to treat them. Mechanization is required, especially because we have uh, issues with uh, labor, which is extremely expensive. We need to make automation and to reduce manual work. We work to improve in yields by precision agri agriculture and by other means, such as uh, define a specific pollination, food thinning and other practices in the field. We look for irrigation and fertilization to maximize yield. And since irrigation, since its water resources are limited and are expensive. And we look always for post-harvest technologies to promote and to keep elite uh, product because without being elite, Majul will not be what it is. Another thing is that we always worried about strategic diseases such as Bayud, which is not present in Israel, and pests like the Red Palm River that is really making a lot of problems for the date industry. So some of the resources which we, we, we have are uh, remote sensing and precision agriculture that are already implemented in the research, but also in the industry. And we may we develop tools specifically for uh, promoting the research like very large uh, lysimeters where you can study irrigation and fertilization of dates, effect of salt, effect of uh, boron and other effects on, on uh, the, 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 the trees or mod modular phototrons where you can apply a specific control conditions into, uh, into uh, food clusters, inflorescences and study fertilization, uh, fruitlet development and food quality and ripening. One of the important thing is food quality. And we need to invest a lot in food quality before the harvest and post harvest to, to enable fresh life, a uh, shelf life uh, uh, conditions. Uh, one of the most important thing is to develop new pro, uh, product that will give an advantage to the Israeli industry. And one of it is the fresh module, which is a uh, harvest before the food dries completely. So it's much more juicy, it's much more fruity, and it's extremely of high quality. The demand for it is good, but is great, but the uh, production is difficult because you have to ripen exactly the same uh, stage. And therefore, and later on, this fruit is extremely susceptible to microbial uh, attack. So we develop in a protocol for especially, for especially growing the trees for harvesting this specific product. We look for industrial curing of quality uh, rutab fruit, and we look for enhanced durability and develop a protocol for shelf life to enable year round marketing of this uh, new product. And this is how a fresh module versus the semi-dry module look in the European market.
Red Bank retail, as I said, is one of the major threats to the industry. This uh, weevil uh, lays its eggs on near the fronts and they uh, go and, and, and the uh, lava penetrates the uh, trunk and eats its content, making tunnels inside. Usually you don't detect it until the tree falls at the base and you can detect these large holes, caves inside the, the, the trunk. Uh, in ornamental trees, which is uh, the, the, the attack is devastating and the crown is usually attacked and you'll see that the tree dies. So this is an extremely important uh, problem in Israel and in any day growing countries. What we did is developing tools in order to monitor it and we can monitor specifically the spread of the weevil. Unfortunately, now it's present in most of the growing country and of, of Israel. But we had to develop additional tools. So more than monitoring and characterizing the spread by uh, uh, traps, we uh, developed tools for early detection using acoustic, which was found the most efficient, but also we made attempt to uh, follow the early identification using uh, remote uh, sensing and other approaches. Uh, the, the acoustic uh, approach was further used by a, a private company called Agvin, and then, then technology developed real uh, sensing and real monitoring of the status of the tree uh, in, uh, in the orchards. And now many trees are equipped with this uh, technology, which with a sensor that really uh, we really detect any weevil and and provide us with information to to uh, treat these trees. Moreover, we develop new chemical and biological treatments against the weevil. But one of the major things that I want to speak in the last few minutes that I have is the height of the trees. Palms can really reach the sky, and if you look on orchards even in the USA 15 years ago, you can see that they are climbed accessed by ladders, sometimes two or three consecutive ladders. Using working on dates and especially on Manjur requires that we'll, we'll climb the trees and reach the, uh, the bunches and the inflorescences on the crown many times, eight, sometimes 10 times a year to do the different tasks of uh, pollination, food thinning, harvesting, and other tasks. And for this in Israel, machines, specific machines were developed, high platform that enable safe work on the uh, tree. But the higher the trees, the higher the platforms, the more expensive and the more dangerous the work on there. Working on the height uh, was, uh, I mean, solving uh, the work on the height uh, is a main issue and we developed machines to enable efficient work on the large trees. Some of these like sprayer and dusters from the, from, uh, can, can work from the ground. Other uh, machines work on the, part, on, the platform, on the platform to enable efficient uh, pollination or uh, spraying of insecticides. And with this approach, the, 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 the daily work of pollination and, uh, and spraying is much more efficient. But harvesting can also be done machinery, but, 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 but automatically by machines. Uh, here we speak about uh, mechanical harvesters that, uh, that shake the fruit from the tree and collect the, uh, the, the fruit on trays and uh, uh, trays automatically to enable efficient and rapid uh, work on it. Uh, but another approach can be to uh, reduce ex extensive uh, growth by growth uh, regulators. So here an experiment that was done in which you can see treated trees, in, in the treated trees, the crown is much more uh, reduced in its uh, growth. The fronts are coming much more uh, dense relative to each other and the tree is uh, the, the tree growth is restricted by 40, 50, and sometimes even 60% relative to control. 
this enables longer uh, production, safer work, and more efficient because the fees remain lower and, and then work is more efficient. And what you can get is actually a reduced a height of the, of, of, of the trees, quality of the, of the uh, foot is preserved and either increased, the foots are larger and they are of higher quality. If I summarize, of, and of course, this is approach and now we're looking into biotechnical uh, approach that can get sim similar, uh, similar uh, restriction of uh, palm growth. In summary, the Israeli uh, industry is a world leading in uh, date, specifically in medjool cultivation. And we develop new tools for date palm cultivation for machine and automation, from pest and disease protection and through sophisticated world tree physiology up to future advances by technology approaches. We hope that these tools and new that we will develop will keep the industry forward and keep the famous Israeli Majul leading the world industry. Thank you. Hello, my name is Arnon Dag. I'm a researcher in Gilat Research Center in uh, Volcani Institute. And I will speak with you about olive cultivation in arid area, the Israeli experience. So olive are grown in Israel for many, many years. We estimate that olives, people start to grow olive in this region around 6,500 years ago. And from here, from our region, the olive continued to disperse around the Mediterranean basin, then to Greece, Italy, and eventually to Spain. So there is very long uh, tradition of olive cultivation in, in our region, in Israel, in uh, Lebanon, in uh, Syria, and in Palestinian area, and in Jordan. So our area is very, very important in respect to the tradition of uh, olive cultivation. Lately, we found uh, some pits dated from 7,000 years ago uh, near the seashore, near uh, Haifa. And uh, we just published a paper which indicates that those pits indicate uh, the first example of uh, table olive processing. So again, it just emphasized the importance of our region in uh, olive cultivation. So for thousands of years, people go here olive in a traditional manner. They count on uh, uh, the rain and didn't irrigate. And lately, <clears throat> there is a transfer from a traditional rain-fed orchard to an intensive uh, orchard. Just to give you some general figures about the industry in Israel. So <clears throat> we have around 25,000 hectares of traditional rain-fed orchard, especially in the uh, Galilee, followed by the Arab sector. We have intensive irrigated orchard of around 5,500 hectares. Most of them are harvested using trunk shakers. We have super high density orchard in around 1,000 uh, hectares, which generally harvested uh, using table grape harvester. Uh, in addition, we grow around 1,500 uh, hectares of uh, table olive, uh, mainly uh, manzanilla olive. When we speak about uh, olive for oil production, not only the quantity matter, but also quality. Along the last decade, there is increased awareness of the consumer to quality issue of olive oil, and people are looking for the extra virgin uh, quality. Not, uh, they will not be satisfied with only virgin or, or ordinary olive oil. So the grower need, from one hand, to produce high amount of uh, oil, and from the other point of view, we need to produce high quality oil, that will be uh, fitted for the uh, standard of extra Belgian olive oil. So as mentioned earlier, uh, for many years, people grow in our region and still grow olive in traditional uh, orchard. In those orchards, the main limiting factor for productivity is availability of water. 
because we are count only on the rain during the winter, which store in the uh, soil. Therefore, the uh, distance between the trees relatively large, around 10, uh, 10 meter by 10 meter. So the productivity per area is not so high. We're sticking about around uh, 500 uh, kg of oil per uh, hectare. Along the last decade, there is transformation into intensive cultivation. In this system, we provide the tree with irrigation all the summer long, so we can uh, increase the density of a uh, tree to uh, up to four by seven meters. So we have much a higher uh, density of canopy the same area, and we can have uh, four times the yield in comparison to the traditional orchard. So this is a, a dramatic increase. In those orchards, the main limiting factor of productivity is a, a radiation. So it's important to prune the tree and allow the radiation to enter the canopy. And lately, a new system coming and became very popular, which called super high density orchard. Uh, here, the density is very high and the olive tree are harvested using a table grape harvester, so the demand for labor for harvesting is very, very uh, low, and it's relatively profitable uh, system, and it became more and more uh, popular. If we look on the development of uh, olive oil uh, production in the world, we can see an increase from the 60s to around 1 million ton, and now there is production of more than 3.5 uh, million ton of uh, olive oil. The increase uh, of demand is because new countries that did not use to consume olive oil start to consume olive oil. People are aware more and more to the gastronomic and health properties of olive oil, and therefore the uh, demand increase. In order to satisfy this uh, uh, increased demand, there is intensification of cultivation. As I mentioned earlier, transferring of uh, traditional olive orchard, rain-fed olive orchard into irrigated one, which can produce much more olive oil and increase in cultivation area. And now when we have irrigation, we can also grow uh, olive in the desert area. That if we provide the water to the tree, uh, the desert can be uh, an excellent uh, place for uh, growing uh, olive. And if we look on the uh, number in Israel regarding the uh, uh, production, olive oil production, we can see um, general trend of increase from around 3,000 uh, ton per year to more than uh, uh, 12 ton per year of uh, olive oil. So there is a, a consistent uh, increase in uh, olive oil production. Mainly uh, it came from uh, intensive olive oil, so irrigated olive oil. Now this uh, lecture is focused on uh, cultivation of olive in, uh, in desert area. And we will focus in the Negev Desert. You can see here the annual rainfall of, uh, of this area. We start from 300 millimeter per year and going down uh, to less than 50 millimeter per year. So it's real uh, desert condition. And here we have a map of uh, the olive in Israel. You can see uh, the, the olive are scattered all around the country from the Galilee to the uh, coastal plain and uh, inner plain. And generally we do not grow uh, olive oil with uh, less than 300 millimeter of rain per year, unless we irrigate them. So from the time we started to irrigate, we can start to uh, grow olive also in the desert area. And I will focus on this area, it's called the Revivim area. It's in the middle of the Negev Highland. And my uh, uh, main uh, presentation and main finding will be focused uh, on this area. So this is a satellite imaging of this, uh, cul the cultivation area. This is Kibbutz Revivim. <clears throat> and we have here around 500 uh, hectare of uh, olive oil, olive for uh, oil production and for table olive. And uh, those uh, orchards were planted around 25 years ago. And the water we use to irrigate them are uh, brackish water. Uh, with EC of uh, 4.5 the Siemens per meter. Uh, this type of water uh, cannot be used for other crops, but since olive are relatively tolerant to salinity, we can use those uh, brackish water to irrigate the uh, olive. 
And here you can see a picture of the olive groves in the middle of the desert area in this, uh, uh, in this described uh, area. You can see that the olive grow very nice and also provide nice yield. The isolation of this area from other area in Israel and the relatively hot summer reduce issue of infestation with olive fly and uh, fungus uh, diseases. So the grower can uh, spray less than grower in the other part of Israel. So this is kind of advantage to grow olive in the, uh, in the <clears throat> dry and uh, hot area. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, uh, we produce, and especially this area produce uh, two main uh, product. One is uh, uh, table olives, um, and it's it produced very nice and very uh, high quality uh, fruit, which have high demand among the uh, producer of table olive, and also uh, uh, olive uh, for oil production. And you can see that uh, some of the oil uh, gain very uh, prestigious uh, award, like the Mario Solinas uh, competition in the in Spain. Olive came from the Negev area, uh, obtained one of the uh, first prize in this uh, competition. So we can produce very good and high quality oil in this area. One of the um, objective of our uh, research in this area in respect to table olive is to reduce the demand for labor because picking the table olive required a lot of uh, uh, labor. So we are uh, examining different systems to mechanize the harvest and, and save labor. And we have some approaches that allow the grower now uh, to use uh, uh, mechanization to uh, pick the fruit and uh, reduce the demand for labor. Another issue when we think about growing olive in this unique area is what is the best cultivar? So here you can see result of experiments that run for around 10 years in which we compare the production of different variety. And you can see that Barnea local uh, uh, variety that was bred by uh, uh, Professor uh, Shimon Levy <clears throat> is one of the best uh, producer in this area. You can see that the average uh, olive oil yield is more than uh, 2,500 uh, kg per uh, hectare per year, which is very nice uh, uh, yield. Olive uh, Barnea variety is very suitable for uh, the intensive cultivation uh, system. Another variety that you can see here that grow very well under those conditions and also provide very nice yield is the Coronaki. Coronaki is very well adapted to the super high density olive orchard system. And you can see here that uh, it's harvested using a grape harvester. So those two varieties, the Coronaki and Barnea, can provide us very good uh, solution to uh, for cultivation in, in a desert area. Another issue is the salt management. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we are using uh, brackish water with a, a high salt content. And one of the key uh, issue when we are using uh, saline water for irrigation is leaching. We cannot allow the salt to accumulate in the uh, root zone. So we must uh, provide more water than the requirement of the tree in order to leach the salt. And I will show you one example what we are doing in, in those orchards. Uh, here you can see 10 centimeters in three depths, in uh, uh, 30 centimeters, in 60, and in 90. If we would like to be sure that we leach the salt we need to see that in each irrigation event, irrigation event here are the uh, blue circle, we have reduction in the water stress or water tension in the soil in the deep uh, uh, depth. You can see here in 90 centimeters, we can see improvement in the uh, water status after irrigation. So it's telling us that some water reached below the uh, active root zone. And in situations that uh, there is no reduction in the tension of water. It's telling us that we need to increase the amount of water, and then we have again a, a leaching of the uh, of the salt uh, down. So it's important to follow the uh, the salt and to follow the salt and to see that we do not uh, cause uh, over accumulation of uh, salinity in the uh, root zone. 
Another uh, possibility to follow and see whether we have a stress in the orchard is to uh, see using thermal imaging if <clears throat> there is a problem of uh, salinity or problem of uh, water. And here you can see using thermal imaging, we can uh, differ between trees that receive high amount of water to trees that receive a low amount of water. So remote sensing using thermal imaging is very powerful tool for this uh, uh, issue. Another uh, component of the cultivation in this uh, uh, area is applying a compost in order to increase the nutrient uh, composition and nutrient uh, availability in the soil and uh, soil structure. <clears throat> so we can uh, apply a compost in the field in trenches near the trees and it's uh, improved the soil texture and it's improved the uh, nutrient availability. So this is another uh, management activity that we are doing in those orchards. <clears throat> another uh, approach that we are using is uh, inoculating the young uh, plant with uh, mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is a special fungi that allow the young plant to uh, absorb nutrient better uh, nutrient in the soil. So we inoculate uh, uh, the young uh, rooted cutting and uh, here we plant the tree in the field. And when we compare trees that were inoculated with mycorrhiza to trees that were not inoculated with mycorrhiza, you can see the big differences and the mycorrhiza helps the tree to grow faster under those uh, arid conditions. The last approach that I will uh, show you is uh, using uh, uh, soil mulching. Uh, soil mulching uh, using uh, plastic, it is help us to reduce evaporation, reduce salinity damage, especially after a rain event and prevent uh, weed growth. So this is the beginning of the uh, plant development. It's very helpful to using uh, soil mulching. So uh, that was um, my lecture. I'll be happy to be in contact with people that interest in cultivation of uh, olive in uh, dry and desert condition. And thank you for listening for this uh, lecture. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I want to introduce myself, Professor Dr. Bekir Erol Ak uh, from Turkey. I am working at university. I am a lecturer. Uh, I am working on fruit trees especially on pistachios, almonds, and uh, some others. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee, uh, and I would like to thank, uh, invited, they invited me to make a presentation about the uh, fruits, semi-arid conditions, and irrigated conditions. Uh, and um, in my region, uh, generally, we can call that it is very dry and hot summer, and in winter, uh, mild winter, I can say. And uh, my region, especially, I will show you uh, now uh, in, in slides, uh, Upper Mesopotamia region. I will share a slide with you. Yes, I will be a little bit fast because uh, we have no more time. Fruit production under semi-arid and irrigated conditions at Southeast Anatolian region of Turkey. I will mention about in this uh, my region uh, the, about the fruit trees. Uh, you see Southeast Anatolian region, we called Gap region. Gap region means is this region, uh, these cities are uh, affected by uh, Atatürk Dam. Atatürk Dam is a very big uh, dam in Turkey and uh, it is using for uh, irrigation for agriculture product and uh, to produce electricity. Uh, you see here a very huge Atatürk Dam uh, established in uh, near to uh, Şanlıurfa region. 
And Upper Mesopotamia, I have mentioned that Southeast Anatolian part is also uh, the fertile soil or uh, very uh, important uh, land in the world because Hazrat Abraham, Prophet Abraham, uh, birth uh, in Shanurfa. And uh, main developing sectors with CAP project, agriculture, industry, transportation, communication, uh, urban and rural in, 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 uh, infrastructure, health, education, tourism, and culture was changed. This was a GAP project, is uh, a governmental project. A general uh, ecology of GAP region, this region, very high temperature in summer months, a low precipitation, very dry conditions, soils are poor organic matter, high content of clay and lime. And uh, besides all the elect hydroelectric uh, uh, production, uh, uh, sunshine, it is producing from the sun also electricity. And here you see Atatürk Dam in this part, and this is the uh, Haram Plain. And water comes very high quality water comes and uh, everywhere uh, before the uh, dam, uh, it was a very dry area, but now, uh, green area. And farmers are very happy to uh, irrigate their product and new production is getting higher and higher. And this, um, we have some problems. We have, we had the problems, especially for uh, salinity problem because of the high, uh, uh, high uh, evaporation. And then uh, government uh, has started to uh, establish pipeline two meters uh, below the uh, land for drainage, drainage pipeline. And in 1989, it was a very, uh, very limited greenish part. And this uh, area is Haram Plain. And in 2004, it was a greenish part because of the water. Irrigation uh, methods in the region, uh, flow irrigation, cotton corn, etc. Drip irrigation fruit trees, vegetables, and vineyards, subsurface, fruit trees, sprinkler irrigation, wheat, lentil, etc. And main fruit crops before the water, pistachio, olive, almond, pomegranate, figs. Uh, as you know, these uh, fruit trees resistant to drought conditions. After water is available, all kinds of fruits, additionally, apricot, peach, strawberry, apples, can be grown in this area also. Pistachio, pistachia vera, it is very uh, many years before uh, the cultivation has started in this area, in the gap area also. And uh, what pistachio production, when we look at, the Iran is the first country in the world, second USA and Turkey is the third country. In this uh, part is generally uh, pistachia species is very common here. In this part also, you see at the uh, map, you see, uh, the, the Shanurfa is my city also. And pistachio orchard from a uh, governmental uh, farm, uh, Ceylan Pınar State Farm, just near the Syrian part, and uh, without irrigation uh, and dry conditions. And main effective factors to get high yield in pistachio, pollination is very important and irrigation. Irrigation with fertilization. These are very important points. And some production, uh, production uh, conditions in Turkey, I want to show you in very sloppy and uh, on the mountains and different parts and uh, no other fruits can be grown in this area, rocky areas and some of them also new establishment, but some of them are wild trees uh, uh, grafted. Uh, you see the pistachio trees uh, uh, roots are a tap rooting system. And lime contact, when you touch your hand in this part, uh, soil part, uh, it's a little bit humidity because the lime is absorbed from the, uh, from the uh, uh, air humid. And you see here very poor soil conditions and only pistachio can be grown uh, such a uh, soil condition and rocky conditions and some uh, areas with uh, the sloppy areas, uh, farmers are uh, makes the terraces to produce 
pistachio because uh, climate is very suitable to produce pistachio. As you see here, uh, the, the pistachia terebintus, they are also top working and or grafting uh, with pistachio and other wild trees. It's they are pruning and uh, budding such a tree uh, occurs. And in dry conditions, if the people uh, sow uh, two or three seeds, and then covers with the, this, uh, you see here, we call them homelet because to prevent the uh, ev ev evaporation. You see here, they are uh, putting a very big size of uh, stones uh, around the plant to protect uh, evaporation. These are samples, you see? Very bad conditions, lime content is very high, and pistachio can be grown very easily because uh, pistachio is suitable for this area. And then when the uh, dam uh, established, uh, found out and uh, irrigation facilities occurred and uh, it is also established the big pipelines and pistachio can be grown with olives also. You see here, soil is not so good. And after irrigation, uh, farmers are look for grafted plants and new plantations. Pistachio orchard in dry conditions. And sometimes with uh, not only olive, sometimes with uh, grape one. And fruit, when we look at the fruit development of pistachios, uh, two types of growth is occur. And second growth type, uh, if you irrigate in this part, uh, the, plant, uh, the fruits uh, will be bigger size and Splitted ones and the embryo development you see here and here also. And irrigation uh, affects the uh, length of shoots, uh, leaf number size, leaf number and size, alternate bearing will be lower, yield will be increased, fruit size will increase, splitting rate increase, plant fruit rate will be lower. Irrigation in Turkey, Syria, Iran, no irrigation so far because be, be before many hundred years before, there was no any irrigation. Only USA and uh, Iran irrigated uh, all the plants. Irrigation methods, you know different methods for irrigation, spring irrigation, and why pistachio is irrigated. Total rainfall is very low in this area. Soils are poor because of nutrient. Temperature is very high in summer, that means that Vegetation, vegetation period, uh, pistachio needs water. Relative humidity is low. You see flow irrigation, drip irrigation, and uh, can drip irrigation, uh, very big advantages also. You see here, when you look at these trees, um, generally in dry conditions, this is uh, 35 years old in dry conditions, but irrigation, irrigated conditions, eight years old. I have established this trees. The rib irrigation and uh, underlying pipeline. If they are uh, established the pipeline under under the soil. Uh, you see here there is a very big advantages uh, underground drip irrigation. Uh, less water, less reduction uh, reduction of labor, uh, fever diseases. Uh, location of fertilizer, less evaporation, you see here. But if you apply wrong, wrong, uh, wrong uh, irrigation system, the tree will be uh, damaged, be, will be died because of the uh, diseases. You see here, wheat are green here, but the trees are uh, will die because uh, when you uh, make irrigation, uh, the water shouldn't be, mustn't be touched the trunk and the trees will be dry. You see here, there are a lot of water here because we see that we are green. And uh, my phytopathologist, uh, my friend uh, controlled that there is a, uh, some uh, soil bone diseases problem. You see here, the, in dry conditions, uh, the between the uh, trees are very large and uh, irrigated conditions, 
you can make them uh, nearer to each other. Uh, this means that a lot of three in a one decker. You see here, fruits and different rootstocks is can be used and newly uh, farmer in under dry condition, uh, irrigated conditions, uh, they are using rootstock UCB1. Uh, winter irrigation, uh, when rain is not enough during winter time, uh, uh, the farmer is, uh, if there is no rain, we can irrigate them during the winter. But spring irrigation and when the uh, temperature is getting lower in at night uh, and these ice occur and pistachios in dry land and also almond. Almond is also uh, growing uh, in dry conditions, but uh, because uh, some uh, amygdalus orientalis, amygdalus turcomonica, all of them grow in this area naturally. Almond is culturally possible at Southeast Anatolia because there is uh, enough high temperature, low re relative humidity in summertime during the maturation harvesting time. It is very important. Low relative humidity is very important during maturation and harvesting time. And winters are also cold enough to provide chilling requirement. It can be grown uh, soil high lime content. And uh, it can be produced the uh, nursery, uh, produce the plants in this area. Tap root is uh, cut it here. You see uh, almond orchards, uh, mainly late flowering cultivars is valid for this area mainly Ferragnes and Ferraduel, both of them uh, established. And another fruit trees uh, resistant to drought, olives. Olive is very important in this part because very old tree. You see here, I have shown this uh, picture to uh, Spanish, my uh, colleague. Uh, they said that this tree at least uh, 400 years old. And on the mountain. And on the mountain, they, you can't uh, plant another pla uh, uh, fruit trees, but olives, pistachios can be grown. You see here, very uh, bad soil conditions. Why? Because uh, you see here, uh, when they are digging uh, by mission and lime content, calcareous soil, these areas are covered with uh, olive trees, of course and olive and uh, pistachio trees in winter time. Olive can be grown in this area and the rib irrigation occurred and some variety is important. For example, this is a gamlic variety. It is not resistant to very high temperature or uh, so, uh, temperature of uh, air temperature uh, because physiologically they are uh, falls down their fruits. You see here, all of them, uh, all of them covered with uh, olive trees. And mainly in this area, Nizip Yalık, Halhalı, Gemlik, Kilis Yalık, very common cultivars. But Gemlik is not suitable in this area. Uh, the other ones also produce for oil. And new orchards, uh, Arbekina, Arbekina in uh, under uh, irrigated conditions, farmers are started uh, to establish uh, Arbekina orchards. Pomegranates, another, another fruit uh, resistant to uh, dry conditions. Uh, pomegranate also growing in this area. After, after uh, water comes in this area, it is uh, also uh, irrigating by drip irrigation system, you see. But cracking is also important in this area and farmers uh, should recognize that uh, the irrigation should be cut off before uh, 15 days before uh, harvesting day. You see here, and we are training our uh, students also in this area, drip irrigation system. Another fruit, the last fruit I will mention, figs. Figs also very important in this uh, area and uh, it is grown very well. The fruits are small, small, but uh, sugar content is very high. You see different cultivars. Uh, some of them uh, adaptable, some of them no. 
because in a very hot summer uh, in August, uh, they are falling in leaves. You see different uh, cultivars. And this is very common in this area, Keteng Gömleği, uh, in Şanlıurfa conditions, very high uh, sugar content. And uh, maybe it is necessary to uh, caprification. Uh, we are teaching the caprification for farmers and also some sunshine, uh, burning of sun uh, here, different cultivars, and my orchard also different cultivars. Uh, sometimes it is irrigating by the river irrigation. And Şanlıurfa is very important city because 12,000 years ago, Göbekli Tepe, you, you have maybe you have heard Göbekli Tepe very important uh, area for uh, civilization. Thank you so much for your attentions. Uh, this is some pictures from Haram uh, ruins and uh, sacred pool. Uh, Hazreti Abraham was born in this area and Atatürk them and uh, general we from uh, Şanlıurfa. Thank you so much uh, listening to me.